Yes, my brother, my sister. During this time of Lent, the Lord is calling us to climb the mountain. Just like Abraham climbed the mount and just with his son, just like Jesus climbed the mount of Tabo with the apostles, the Lord is calling us to climb the mountain. But the problem with us is our baggage is too heavy. We have been caught up in this world. We are listening to the world and we have so much of things we are holding on to. And we think our security is what we hold on. And we are unable to climb this mountain. And the Lord says, when you climb that mountain, your needs will be provided. All your needs will be taken care of. I will provide all what you need. So today, as we come before the Lord, let's ask the Lord, Lord, where have I got stuck? Where am I got lost here in this world? And I want to let go. I want to lead a sacrificial life. I want to climb that mountain to enjoy your beautiful presence where you are going to fulfill all my needs, all my everything that I need, you will provide. So today, Lord Jesus, I want to climb that mountain to be with you, to be with you, Lord Jesus, to give me that grace. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Let's worship the name of our Lord Jesus. Let's worship him like he's worthy. We just worship him from the deep ends of our souls. Let's keep worshiping him in his name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are a faithful God. Let's draw you are with us forever and never. We lift your name, Lord. We lift your name. We give you the glory, Lord. This place is yours, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Jesus. In the Gospels. It shows us when the Lord, when our Lord resurrected, He called the disciples onto a hill in Galilee. And when the disciples saw our Lord, they worshipped Him and He drew near to them. My brothers and sisters, that hill that the Lord has called us today is this very place. He has called us to this mountain, to this hill, to worship Him. And he will draw near to us. Because it is in the worship that he draws near. It is in the praise that he comes near to us. And at this very moment, he is with us. It doesn't matter who is in front of us, who is next to us. It is Jesus who is next to us. It is Jesus who is in front of us. At this very moment, he will speak into the darkness. He will speak into the pain. He will speak into the hurt. And when there is darkness, there will be light. Where there is hurt, there will be love. Where there is pain, there will be joy. The Lord himself says, he will never return anyone empty-handed. And his word will not return empty. And we believe that just as that man who was blind will return, he has, the Lord does, do you believe? And he said, I believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. So today, my brothers and sisters, we proclaim the name of the living God. And that it is here tonight. And he's going to do all that he promised within us. Because he is a faithful God. He is a strong God and there's nothing that is impossible. And he's going to speak to the very place that we are weak. And we give him all the glory. And we proclaim that he is a living God. He is alive in this place. He is alive in us. He is resurrected. He is the only living God. He is the only living God. And we worship him. We worship the name of Jesus. The only living God. The only living eternal Father. Hallelujah. We give you praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I give myself to you today to be completely swept away, lost inside the glory of your love. As deep calls on to deep, O Lord, my soul cries out.
loved us so much he went to that cross in order to deliver us from all the corruption of this world from that sinfulness that has come down the generations so today we truly believe in you lord that when you went to that cross you went is because you wanted me to have the fullness of your life my brother my sister if you feel that you have lost it if you feel there is no end to your suffering if you feel that you're sinful if you feel no one loves you look at that cross and see who is hanging on that cross he could have walked away but jesus went to the cross because he wanted to give us life so let's believe in this beautiful love like in 2 corinthians 5 16 17 paul says anyone who is in christ is a new creation the old has gone and the new has come. This is the promise of what God did on that cross, that when we believe in Him, we are a new creation. The generation of sin has gone. Let's give Him a clap of praise, my, my brother, my sister. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you. We believe in that love, Lord. We believe, Lord Jesus, that we are no longer slaves of sin, Lord. We are no longer Ignite my heart with love and compromise. Your presence is my soul desire. I long to burn with holy fire. Demonstrate your power here on earth. You bring your life into
Praise the Lord. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, let's welcome the Holy Spirit into our hearts. He's the comforter, he's the counselor, and he's always there for us. He's always there to comfort us and give us his love, joy, and peace into our hearts. Let's thank and praise God for the Holy Spirit that he's granting us today. The other, praise you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, worship you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, worship you, Lord Jesus. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's pray for the intercession of the Blessed Mother, who always said yes to the will of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Good evening, my brothers and sisters. 
a couple of announcements to be made, but before that, uh, we would like to welcome any newcomers this evening. Please stand wherever you are. Any newcomers this evening? Yes, we have one. Shall we give a round of applause and welcome all of them? And uh, our ushers will give you a small slip of paper. Just uh, fill up that so that we can communicate with you with our future programs. Thank you. The morning reflections have commenced, and we invite everyone to attend these reflections from Monday to Friday from 6.30 a.m. onwards at St. Lawrence's Church Hall, Vallavatta. The Singhala and Tamil meetings will be held this Friday at 6.30 p.m. at St. Lawrence's Church Hall. Please note this timing and pass it on to your friends we would like to have them at these meetings as well. The weekly English meeting is held at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. every Tuesday at the Sacred Heart Church, Rajagiriya. All are invited to attend these meetings with their friends as well. The youth meeting will be held this Saturday, 3rd of March, at 4 p.m. at St. Anthony's Church Hall, Kolpiti. We invite all youth to attend this meeting and kindly advise all parents, especially for parents, to encourage their children to come to this youth meeting this Saturday, 3rd of March at 4 o'clock in the evening at St. Anthony's Church Hall. Called a new and senior citizens meeting will be held on the 4th of March at 10 a.m. at St. Anthony's Church Hall. This for called the new and senior citizens meeting on the 4th of March. Now, this announcement, basically, I would like to focus on the parents, those who come with their little kids. The creche is open from 6 p.m. onwards on Wednesdays at St. Peter's College. Now, I would certainly call it a stepping stone or a gateway for your little kids to start a journey of this nature as you adults do and start at their young, tender age. The creche is just not only a creche. I would call it a place where you could start a journey at your young age and join the kids' ministry. That will be the pathway for you to join the kids' ministry or kids as well. Now, to prove a point, I would like to bring a few kids from the kids' ministry on stage. Praise the, Praise the Lord. My name is Boniface from the Kids Ministry of the Community of the Risen Lord. We at the Kids Ministry would like to invite all the children aged between 4 to 12. The Kids Ministry meeting will be held tomorrow at St. Anthony's Church Hall from 9 to 11.30 in the morning. Tomorrow, we will be learning about what the season of Lent is all about. We invite all the uncles and aunties to please bring your children. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uncles and aunties, the meeting will be at St. Anthony's Church Hall, call pity. Thank you. All right, okay. There's one testimony to be read out. It goes like this. I was born to a Christian mother and a Buddhist father. I didn't practice either of these faiths as a young boy, nor in my adult life. I was a very heavy drinker and a smoker. In 2010, I got a promotion and was given a lot of benefits that included an official residence and many other benefits. My life, according to the world, was very good. I started cutting corners and finding ways that were not right to make more money. This helped me to continue to live a very decadent life. In my heart, I knew this was wrong, but I was completely taken over 
by what I could do with all the money I was getting. Every weekend was a drunken bridge party. While this lifestyle was going on, I met my now wife. The instance I met her, I knew she was the one for me and I was doing very well in my job and life seemed to be perfect. In the hopes of making more money, I started a side business selling land, but even here I started doing business in a wrong way because all I wanted was to have enough cash to live the party life. My girlfriend, who was brought up in a very conservative Christian family, didn't like the way I was living my life, and we were constantly fighting because she wanted me to change my way I was living. So I just, to make her happy, I reduced my partying and drinking. In 2012, my girlfriend went overseas to pursue her studies. I was devastated that I couldn't be with her, yet decided to continue a long-distance relationship. With my girlfriend studying overseas, I went back to my old style of living and lived the same decadent lifestyle by hiding it and lying about it to my girlfriend. I was very proud of my life. I thought I had all that I needed, a girl to call my own, money, a vehicle, a home, and a job, of course. I was at a point in my life that I thought I was invisible, so much so that driving under the influence of alcohol was nothing new to me. I had had a few near misses, and the fact nothing happened made me even more arrogant. In August 2014, my cousins visited me for a weekend. We started drinking in the evening and finished only the next morning. One of our friends had to be picked up from the station, so all of us got into the jeep and went to pick him up. I had fallen asleep at the wheel and woke up when I heard the scream from the jeep, but I was too late because by that time the jeep had gone off the road and was toppling down a hill. It flipped about five to six times before rolling back onto the ground and I began to slide down the hill. We had fallen down about 200 feet. By God's grace, none of us had any injuries. The incident woke me up to reflect on my life. I decided to change my life with a strong belief that this was a call from God to turn to Him. As I began to reflect on my life, I began to see how God had been silently and patiently called me to turn back to him. I decided to receive my first Holy Communion in 2014. When I was accepted, when I first accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I realized what it was to have a relationship with him and began to see God's faithfulness in my life and realized that he has always been faithful and loving me even though I didn't see nor recognize this. Soon after my fiancé graduated from university, we de decided to get married and then to migrate. We got married amidst many challenges. In my haste to make the migration a reality, I once again chose a path that was not according to the way God would have wanted. I chose to cut corners and not be truthful in this process. Yet, I was praying and asking God to help me. And with much hope, we put in our applications and we were sadly refused. Our dreams were shattered and we found it very hard to deal with this refusal, which was not even based on a valid reason or so we thought. It was during this time that my aunt told me that we had applied on a wrong visa category, a student visa, which was not meant for migration but for a genuine purpose of education. The correct words were, your intentions were wrong. If you want to genuinely study, then it is all right. But if you plan to settle down there, then what you're doing is wrong. 
My wife and I acknowledge the statement, we had wrong intentions and God will never let you go the wrong way. God refined us and it was Almighty He who intervened and said no. After a couple of months, we decided that I truly do need a study abroad experience in my life. In the past, I didn't have necessary finances to fulfill this dream until now. With this thought in mind, I prayed. I prayed to God to forgive my wrong intentions and to make a way for me to go and receive an education abroad. All that if it was God's will for us to return to Sri Lanka after my education was completed, we gladly would. We applied again in September 2016, and this time we were more prepared for all the interviews by the immigration, which I did face, and everything was good. The immigration officer wanted some more documents, and we provided them as well. Yet, we heard nothing for almost three months. I was listening to the CRL Wednesday prayer meeting online, like I always do. However, that particular day, something told me that I should listen to the prayer meeting from a couple of weeks ago, 7th of December, and I clicked on it. The word of knowledge said that there was someone waiting to go abroad, and he has to keep providing documents after documents. Even though the process is taking a long time, God says that he will see you through and you will go abroad. I claimed it. My aunt and uncle who attends the prayer meeting every Wednesday also claim the word on my behalf. In the first week of January, I got a call from the immigration and it was then told the reason for the delay was because somebody had sent a petition saying I was trying to evade my vehicle loan and leave the country and the immigration officers wanted me to prove how I'm going to settle the loan. He also mentioned that it is a very bad remark on my application. I felt the whole world had turned against me. I didn't know what to do, and only thing I knew was to pray. I prayed for hours, crying and begging him to show me a way, but nothing came up. After about a week, I spoke to my wife and decided to settle the loan because we were sure of my visa was going to get rejected. But we didn't want the passport to be black marked. So we decided to settle the loan with the money we got from our wedding, but it was not enough and it was my father-in-law and mother who helped to collect the balance. On the 30th of January, I settled my loans and sent all the settlement documents to immigration. Miraculously, after a few days, on the 6th of February 2017, I got my visas to study abroad. abroad. I couldn't believe it. Our God is amazing God, and if it is his will, he will make a way no matter what. A couple of months later, my wife also joined me here. After much prayers, my wife was blessed with a job at a prestigious organization six weeks after her arrival. I am blessed with a God-fearing wife who has dealt with a lot of hopelessness and misery for a long time because of me, and I thank God every day for making her mine. Both my wife and I took forward, look forward to continue living our lives on the solid foundation that Jesus Christ is our rock and our salvation, and absolutely anything is possible with him. All glory to God. Praise the Lord. 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 Good evening, brothers and sisters. How are you doing this evening? The same as you were doing last evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, as we come together, we have the key to uh, 
breakthrough. What's the key to breakthrough? Praising God. Actually, it's an amazing thing. When you are with God in the right place in your heart and you walk with him sincerely and deeply, uh, God has a way of giving breakthroughs that happen effortlessly. But if you don't do that, you trudge through life. Every step is like walking in the sand. And you have to fight the environment, fight people, and even fight your own self. The simple difference is letting yourself under the lordship and the leading of Jesus Christ. It's an amazing thing because things come together, answers come together. I can't explain it to you actually. There were two things that were out of the blues that happened and uh, two unexpected situations I dealt with this morning. Last evening actually, I realized I had to deal with these two situations. And the Lord taught me something I had learned some years ago, you know. Don't think into the darkness because it will become dark within your own heart. But break the darkness around you. How do you do that? By sending out darts of praise and worship. You say, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Love you, Lord. Acknowledge your power, Holy Spirit. And when you keep pushing the darkness, every step you push the darkness with a, you know, with a, with a push of praise that comes from within you, acknowledging all the time the superior power of God. Every time I thought about how do I deal with this from within me, I said, thank you, Jesus, for dealing with it. Thank you, Father, for handling it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us the breakthrough. And uh, this morning, without my even thinking, from a situation, from a, from a person that I hadn't even thought of for years, came through and gave me the breakthrough that I needed. I was amazed. I just sat there and I was thinking, my God, you opened a way that I would never have even dreamt about. Because you are living in the favor of God. But if you don't do that, you have to fight every battle by yourself. And that's a terrible thing to do. And the choice is yours, the choice is mine. Sometimes what God expects from us seems like Mr. Killjoy. Why is that? You know Mr. Killjoy. That is, it robs you of all your dreams and desires and joy. Because sometimes we want to do things for God that God doesn't want us to do. <laughs> Why is that? Because it simply makes us happy, you know. There are some people who like to help some people. I would really like to help you, but hidden underneath is lust hidden underneath is self-interest somebody wants to escape a difficult situation in one one place so that person wants to be a missionary in another place but in actual fact you are running away from your struggles and if you do that all your life will be trudging but if you trust god and obey him and you just keep pushing the boundaries with praise you know what will happen? God will give you breakthroughs you can't imagine. He will find a way effortless. Or if you play games with God, he allows us to carry the burden upon our own self. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a hand this morning evening? And we say thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Worship you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Worship you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. You know, don't limit God to your understanding. Don't limit God to your resources. Don't limit God to your ways of thinking. That's foolishness because God is bigger. How do you break that darkness? You send out praise. You send out worship. You send out thanksgiving. And many times when we are disappointed and when we fall, what happens is we start reacting in the flesh. 
and actually if you go to see we are trying to serve the lord but we are trying to do it with the flesh it's an amazing thing because we don't know anything else but if you yield obedience brings the fruit of blessing from the lord today as we come before god it's so beautiful last sunday last wednesday i preached to you i said how do you hear the voice of god and the and and the answer was if you say if you let go your attachment you begin to hear the voice of god you know so there also there is a temptation what is that actually i should be holding on to and making a commitment to my relationship but i let go of the attachment because actually i don't want to do that that is not what i mean but what you want to desire to do most said ignatius of loyola he was asked how do you hear god's voice he said think clearly what is it you want to do and what is it you don't like to do if you're not sure do the thing you don't like to do <laughs> that's for sure the mind of god <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> praise the lord because most of the time desire comes from the flesh and most of the time it takes away the peace that is within us but if you do what is not you know what you don't like to do in obedience to god god opens another door for our life praise the lord <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we sing that uh, the first hymn of who is that? Yeah. We'll build a throne of praise, yes? We'll build a throne of praise. Forget about yourself. Give, give, break out of your heart. Break out of your life by lifting your voice and saying, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship your Father. Bless you, Lord. Praise. Let the praise run into the darkness. Let the praise shoot into your confusion. Let the praise break into your life. Praise you, Jesus. Worship your Lord. Bless you, Lord. Honor you, Lord. Worship your Father. You are in charge. You are the answer. You are. You are in the path. The heart of every struggle. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Worship you. Find me a place on the
My 
my sister fight the struggle within your own life the struggle of your flesh by praise by worship not by anger not by reaction not by retaliation not even by sadness not even by deep deep self you know sympathy for your own self feeling sorry for yourself it will only bog you down just he's above every situation he rules just thank the lord for ruling over the problem that you praise think Jesus. is insurmountable Hallelujah. just thank the lord Hallelujah. just praise the lord worship just you worship lord. the lord Ivana, just glorify you we glorify thank you lord you are the hara madana hara madana hara madana glory to your name worship you are you are the Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. We just want to offer you our evening tonight, Lord Jesus. Just take over every struggle of our lives, every struggle of our hearts, and turn it into the platform on which you give your next blessing lord give us the grace to stop the control that we tend to hold over our own lives we tend to control things and to hold on to our own decisions we are afraid to let it go thinking that it will rob us of our happiness lord that's why we obey our flesh we obey our desires we obey the struggle of our nature rather than obey you lord teach us from the heart of abraham he let go the control of his attachment to his own son and he was blessed his son was blessed lord let go the control we have that we hold on attached to our own self we want to be happy we like to do what we want we want to follow our own desires we want to walk in our own ways and we don't want to let it go not even for god but we just let it go today knowing that the the platform for the next blessing is waiting for us and if we feel insecure if we feel alone if we feel so lonely and sad send out light into that darkness by thanking god by praising god by worshiping god for the very thing that's coming into your life to assail you and then you begin to see the power of god reaching into the depths of your heart thank you father worship you lord glory to your name praise you father hallelujah you lord your name hallelujah 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 Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. The Lord is to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. 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 Please be seated, my brothers and sisters. 
there are chairs in front if you are looking, there are people looking, there are chairs in front. Of course, in any religious meeting, there will be chairs in front. Uh, you don't have to worry about that because uh, people are so humble and so good, they always keep the front empty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, as we come together. So last week, we had just returned from Australia. So, uh, we were fighting the, the jet lag. We were not really prepared. So tonight, when we start, I'd like to share with you some of the things that happened uh, back in the, in the meetings in Australia and uh, so that we can all uh, truly glorify the Lord together. It is the spirituality that has originated in a little country like ours, Sri Lanka. So it takes half a day to come out of Sri Lanka. Why is that? Because when you go to a meeting, they don't take you too seriously. Yes, because from where are they? From Sri Lanka, you know. So, so it's like, you know, people ask here, from where are you? I'm from the one knee, you know. And then when you say, somebody says in Colombo, they are from the one knee, takes a long time to take them seriously, you know. So, because uh, uh, this guy is from the one knee, you know. So like that, Sri Lanka has the same problem, you know. And to add to that is our skin color. You know, so when the skin color and this thing comes together, it takes half a day to have a breakthrough where people actually start listening to what you're saying. And uh, through it all, the Holy Spirit moving among people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit also has this annoying habit of not using the conventional systems. You know, if he were, uses the conventional systems, no problem at all. You know, the, the important people do important things and unimportant people are swept under the carpet, you know. You be there in your place, but the Holy Spirit does it the other way around. He takes unimportant people and does important things. And all the important people get huffed and puffed, you know. How, who do they think they are? You know, so it's something that I have dealt with my whole life, you know. So some people even, you know, they, are, they give you what you call the cold shoulder, you know. <laughs> so, so we have to deal with the cold shoulder all the time, you know. So what do you do? Bow your head and praise the Lord, you know. So, so here it is, you know. Uh, actually, uh, this is really... The, the Catholic Charismatic Renewal of New South Wales. You know that, that uh, the Australia is in uh, various states. You know, there are four or five, uh, if I'm not really sure, four or five states in Australia. And uh, two of the biggest, or the states in which the population of Australia mainly is in New South Wales and Victoria. So Victoria has Melbourne and New South Wales as Sydney as their main cities. So in the charismatic renewal of New South Wales, their leadership of the charismatic renewal comes together over a weekend for a retreat. So last year, the, the retreat was conducted. You know, we, we, I have told you earlier how a mega pastor from uh, Sweden, you know, who had uh, uh, over 30 or 40,000 in his congregation, uh, studied the scripture, began reflecting on the history of the church, and ultimately he became a Catholic three years ago. He, he, he crossed over and became a Catholic, you know. And it's a, it was a major event in uh, Christian uh, annals because the first time one of the mega pastors, you know who a mega pastor is, nothing to do with the mega police, you know. <laughs> you know, I was watching television live, I can tell you, don't put that yet. Okay. I was watching television live one day and one of our politicians was asked, this actually happened, you know. So what, what is this new mega police ministry, you know? 
and he said you know so many crimes are taking place all over the place and therefore big police forces are necessary to you know and he went on explaining and he looked at the eyes of the guy who was questioning me realized he had missed the mark badly then he said you know actually to tell you i don't know <laughs> so 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 here it is uh, the mega churches are churches where 30 40000 people gather we are under one pastor and you get one uh, you get two in singapore you get you get several in the united states and uh, i don't know whether you get it in europe uh, very rarely except this this guy's church so he was last year's he was last year's uh, uh, preacher so you can imagine after having him you know uh, this year you get somebody from sri lanka who from where is that they asked who is it anyway but uh, it is from there that we started is the beginning of the retreat okay we can go forward and uh, here we did the two days of the retreat listening to the voice of the lord okay and uh, then we shifted directly from the two days retreat uh, we shifted directly to melbourne we flew to melbourne because uh, in uh, melbourne we were doing seven days and uh, we shifted to and here is the first meeting in uh, melbourne and uh, two three other places that we had and just to talk about this testimony you know this young girl you know some of you know her because their whole family was from uh, from sri lanka now they 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 work there they live there and actually uh, uh, you know uh, she had been having this continuous headaches and that day she had gone to meet the specialist you know and uh, in uh, in australia you can't meet a specialist like we can meet specialist here you know you have to be referred by a general gp you know and the gp has to have valid ground to do that uh, we sri lankans are very advanced we go directly <laughs> directly to the specialist and we and we take medicine even for little things but anyway uh, uh, she had gone to see the specialist and they had taken test and uh, the, they were suspecting some kind of a serious illness and because some ratios some numbers were high so because of that uh, she wanted to go home because of the continuous headache but anyway she decided at the last moment to come for the meeting and during the worship there was a word of knowledge a person who is having continuous headaches is being touched by the lord and he and she came forward to testify uh, actually she didn't testify that day she just this is, is testifying two days later that moment the headache disappeared and she went for the second follow up test and when they went for the follow up test the numbers that had gone up 3 days before had come down and she was completely healed by the lord praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah 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 you know and you can see uh, felicia is singing in australia you can see <laughs> so so <laughs> actually this boy uh, he's been coming for three or four years to our meetings but actually he can't walk though he's standing now he can't walk he comes in the wheelchair every year and uh, every year they pray for him and this year uh, when he came for the meeting uh, the intercessory group you know that uh, mercia lasita felicia as they prayed they received the word that uh, today a person is going to walk you know and be healed in the legs you know and uh, then uh, this boy was brought into the intercessory prayer room you know and they prayed for him and uh, he stood up you know and then after the meeting was over he was brought to the meeting place and he began to walk in the power of god praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah praise your father hallelujah 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 glory to your name hallelujah and this is the weekend retreat 
in Melbourne, you can see it's a very large number, close to 700, 800 people attend. And we have been doing this for now for 11 continuous years. 11 years we are doing this weekend in, uh, in uh, where is it, Berwick. Is it Berwick we are having? Yes. In, uh, in Berwick and uh, so many people come along. And here is Brisbane. We flew then to Brisbane and uh, uh, we, had, we have a team there in Brisbane, uh, young people especially who are going to the universities who are a part of our ministry. We can go forward. And uh, Canberra, you know. And uh, Canberra is a special place because uh, Archbishop Christopher Prowse is the bishop, uh, Archbishop of Canberra. And uh, he's the patron of the uh, CRL in Australia. And therefore, once a year, actually, this Father Ken Barker, you know Father Ken, he, uh, the Archbishop and myself, we did a joint uh, uh, weekend retreat in Canberra. And uh, you know that uh, uh, here he is uh, 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 preaching uh, during, the, during the Mass. He's uh, preaching the Word. And actually, once a year, all the leadership of the five cities this year we couldn't get two cities, but the other three cities, we met together with the bishop and he does like an evaluation and he gives us a guidance every year. So you can see in every place we are in submission to the leading and the direction of the church. And here is the, uh, is the healing service that was conducted. Father Ken and our CRL joint healing service. There were actually beautiful uh, miracles of God that took place here also. Uh, a lady who was having a problem in the knees was healed directly and she was able to walk around the place by the power of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, hold that picture. Actually, I just want to talk to you about uh, this priest here, you know, uh, the, if you ask me the power of the Catholic Church, it is priests like this. His Father Bernie, he's actually in charge of that parish. He's actually a living saint, giving of his whole life to bring the experience of God to the lives of people. And one of the stories about Father Bernie that is said, you know, um, from time to time, Father Bernie, two years ago, was disappearing from the parish, you know. And uh, people were wondering where Father Bernie disappeared, you know. We Sri Lankans, of course, we at once suspect that they are done through something no good, you know. Because our people disappear for no good reason, <laughs> you know. So, so, so you can see, see, he was disappearing. And two parishioners followed him, you know. He was doing you know, cleaning work in a, in a building, you know. They were shocked. Why is Father Bernie doing cleaning work in a building? To see, to do some repair, maintenance work in his church. He was working in that place and bringing the money for that work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing that kind of commitment you can't even imagine. So, true saints of God raised by the Catholic Church. You can see. Okay, we can go forward. And here we are praying for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know that uh, Bishop Prowse, uh, while being an archbishop, is also a practical joker, you know. He has this uh, tendency to, to, do, to, to do practical jokes, you know. We were, we were praying here and, and I wanted him to say the final prayer, but I can't find him anywhere, you know. I was looking where he went, you know. At some, he's not there at the, you know, but the mass is not yet over. And when I look to see, he has quietly come behind me. <laughs> and he's standing over me, you know, as if God has come from behind, you know. <laughs> and he gave me such a shock, you know. <laughs> and you can see the, and uh, here at the end of the retreat in, uh, in, uh, 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 Canberra, all the people together uh, uh, celebrating at the end. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These are the Sydney retreats. So this time it was special. 
in uh, Sydney, uh, they wanted additional support in the sense that uh, how to do a praise and worship. So they requested uh, Jerry to uh, talk about how to do a praise and worship. So one of the sessions uh, that day was given by Jerry, how to do a praise and worship. One, then on the next day, Mercia was invited to talk about intercessory prayer. So it's a breakthrough because normally, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time for them to ask for another speaker, you know. And uh, they, were, they were open to Mercia. This time they are re-inviting Jagat as well for another program. So little by little, we Sri Lankans have been, uh, you know, what shall we say, uh, accepted as a part of a ministry that God is doing. Can go forward. And this is the Holy Spirit mission. That is, the whole diocese comes together. And this is actually the third time that the CRL is doing the Holy Spirit mission in the Paramatta Diocese. And here we are, we are leading the prayer and the worship. Praise the Lord. Are we having anything more? No. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand and we say, thank you, Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to your name. Worship you, Father. Hallelujah. So, you can come inside. You're getting wet. Come. We'll have a chair. There's a chair here. Someone can move from there to here and you can give her the seat. I'm sure we can. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, tonight, the topic I'm talking about, the third Sunday in Lent. And the topic is sin. Sin. Last month, week's topic was sacrifice. This week's topic is sin. So I didn't choose the topics the church has. So just to tell you, our young people are doing the morning meetings. I'm watching it online. Uh, uh, I'm not going into the morning meetings because I want the young people to establish themselves. And in fact, tomorrow, we once again go to Mumbai. We are doing a retreat over the weekend, but we'll be back for the Tuesday meeting in Mamboli. But the younger people are doing all the meetings and we have excellent feedback. So like Australia thinks that we are the one knee, I think many people think, you know, if I'm not there, there's nothing worthwhile to take from there. But that's not true. It's really, really good. I've been following it and looking at it and giving them feedback. And tomorrow is a holiday, isn't it? Thursday. So why don't you make a decision and join tomorrow in the morning for the morning prayer at 6.30. Just give it a try and see. Don't do the one knee stuff. You know, this one, <laughs> this one is not there. The other one is not there. You know, go forward and see what the Lord has to offer you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, what's the topic? Sin. Okay, okay. So, uh, the first thing, if you are writing down, you can write down. What is that? The commandments of God. You can write down. What are the commandments of God? Now, for many of us, the commandments of God are a big nuisance, isn't it? When, especially when you are younger, you think commandments are there to be broken. The trick is not to get caught. So, so there was a definition those days. Who is a, a, a wrongdoer? Someone who does wrong. 
But uh, in the modern world, there's a new definition for wrongdoer. You know who a wrongdoer is? Someone who gets caught. <laughs> so if you don't get caught, it's all right. So commandments is a big problem for human beings. Why is that? People think commandments rob us of our freedom. If you're writing down, you can write it down. What is that? God's commandments rob us of our freedom. So it goes like this. You know, if you take the Ten Commandments, do not do this, do not do that, do not do this, do not do that, do not do the other thing, do not, don't, 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 ten don'ts. So that's why when you are younger, some people think, you know, you know, best is not to get involved in this religion stuff, you know. Because all the time we are telling people, don't. And I think it's a trait of our country. We like to break the law. You see people driving. If you can overtake on the left side, what will you do? You'll overtake. <laughs> so they want to do to fix a fine of 25,000 rupees for overtaking on the left. What happened? Everybody went on strike. <laughs> they said, we want to overtake on the left. So normally in other countries, if you have a red light, that means stop. In our country, if you have a red light, it means stop, look around, no police, go. <laughs> because, because people, we have a tendency not to take the law seriously. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even marriage is like that. If you are not compatible, why do you want to suffer? You know, so some people say, we live together and see. You know, see what God only knows. You know, so, so what happens is, when a problem comes, when a crisis comes, the marriage commitment means nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why, while I have great respect for Iran, and I truly, truly honor her inner journey, I have equal or a little more respect for Kirti. Why is that? Because he committed himself to love his wife right to the end. The, the, the luck of the draw was God gave him a wife who suffered with cancer. How many times I have seen, you know, you're praying in the line abroad and people come and whisper in your ear, I'm a cancer sufferer or a cancer survivor and my husband left me or my wife left me. Why is that? The husband or the wife says, I didn't come to carry your cancer. <laughs> I came to ca have a good time, compatible, agreeable, going on holiday, having a good time, having a good sex life, enjoying ourselves. What about suffering and sacrifice? I didn't come for all that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, her his sacrifice for Irani transformed her. And her transformation transformed uh, the members of the family. You can see the kind of character it had built. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because for Kirti and Irani, marriage was not a convenience. Marriage was not a mistake. Marriage was a commitment according to the commandments of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? Now, if, if the commandments are a problem, why are the commandments a problem? So the next question, why are the 
commandments a problem. Now I want to ask you a, to imagine something. Now you can write down that also so that we can think about it. Imagine a country without the Ten Commandments. You know, imagine a country. Now some of the, you will look at some of the Ten Commandments, you know. Uh, like what? Thou shall not kill. So one country says, you can kill somebody, but you will not be held responsible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can you live in that country? I'm asking. Can you? I'll ask another question. Will you live in that country? No. Can you see? Then you can see commandments are actually gifts from God. If you want a happy life, if you want a blessed life, what do you do? You submit to the commandments of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See the, the, the you, shall, you shall honor your parents. The commandment, you shall honor your parents. You know what happens. It's a beautiful thing. If you look after your parents and honor them, your children will do the same for you. If you disregard your parents and cast them aside because they are a nuisance, it most likely will happen to you as well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Imagine the children will raise in a nation which says you don't look after your parents. Can you, can you imagine that? So, God gave my, myself and my wife the privilege of looking after both sets of parents. And today we have our own children who are 100% committed to us. You know, they won't even think about not being committed. For them, it is natural to be committed because they don't see anything else. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Imagine... Adultery is allowed and permitted in a country. You can break your marriage vows any time you wish, no problem. Would you like to live in such a country? I know some people who would like to. Uh. <laughs> so, but, but, but you would see the, uh, but you would see the majority. You will become terribly insecured you know how often we talk to people whose lives have been made miserable by unfaithfulness so the definition why did God give commandments that we may live happily praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord are you following what I'm saying it what is the first commandment you shall have no other gods when you give God first place you shall not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. When you don't use the name of God in vain, when you respect your parents, when you don't steal and lie, when you are faithful to your marriage, when you, are, when you don't cover the goods of others, when you live that kind of life, that family, that village, that nation becomes the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today, the first thing I want to tell you is, God's commandments is for freedom and blessing and life, not for killing and death and unhappiness. Now the question comes, then why are people unhappy? Why are people dissatisfied with the laws of God? So today we have a very simple answer. Because of the sinfulness within our nature. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So sin is what happens outside. 
Sinfulness is what's happening inside. Are you following what I'm saying? So we have both. We have sin, which is the manifestation of sinfulness, but we also have sinfulness. Otherwise, it's pretty simple, isn't it? You teach the commandments to everybody, everybody obeys the commandments, and people live happily ever after. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, it doesn't work like that because of the sinfulness within us. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? So, the next question comes, why is there sinfulness? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do we come out of this? So that's the first reading of today, of next Sunday. Exodus 20, verse 1. And God spoke all these words. You can say that. Verse 2. You have put 3, 4 and 5. How is... No. 3 and 4 is all. That's okay. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. That is verse 2. So, actually, you can write the word down, slavery. Now, when you are enslaved to anything, you become unhappy in the end. Yes. Enslavement destroys you. If someone is enslaved to pornography, in the end, that person's humanity is destroyed. Somebody is enslaved to, uh, to alcohol, that person's life is destroyed physically destroyed and their family life is destroyed. Somebody addicted to cigarettes, that addiction ultimately enslaves you and destroys you. So here, God is saying, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Egyptians were like gods, completely enslaving the people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it says here, verse 3. If you look at verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Again, as you say, you shall have no other gods before me. So when he says you shall have no other gods before me, it looks pretty Selfish. Isn't it? God is saying, only me. I am the only one. So when, when there are lovers who are in love and looking into each other's eyes, you know, there's a stage like that, you know. Uh, alas, brief, but there is, you know. So when you are, you shall not look at anybody else, even if you get knocked down by a car. You know? So, so. So, so you can see, you know, you shall have no other gods before me. God looks pretty selfish. But let me explain something to you tonight. My brother, my sister, God exists. You can write it down, whether you like it or not. He exists. God exists. But there is a problem. What's the problem? Though God exists, if you are not in submission to God, you don't 
see him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Therefore, when you don't see God or recognize him anywhere, you know what happens? You have to make someone or something God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why some people make their boyfriend or their girlfriend God or a goddess as it may be, you know. And in the end, ultimately, when God becomes, starts behaving like the devil, the problems start. If you make your job your God, it will destroy you. If you make money your God, it will destroy you. If you make your pleasure your God, it will destroy you. Because men and women, we have been created to have a relationship with the one true living God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you have a relationship with God, everything falls into place. But if you don't have a relationship with God, you and I will make something else our God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some gods are obvious, isn't it? Cigarette God, Arak God, you know, those are obvious, you know. And some gods are not too obvious. Like, you know, our, our need to do what we want, you know, the, the, the seeking after pleasure, you know, following our own desires, not able to submit to anything else, is also making a God of your own desire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you make anything else but the living God your God, in the end you will become a slave. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you become a slave, you will be robbed of your joy, peace, and happiness. I was talking about this to a person this morning, you know, because I had made this message. I was talking to someone who, was, who, had, who had come for some spiritual guidance. I was talking to him about it. And then he said, there's a beautiful clip I will send you, he said. And he sent me this clip, you know. It's a... It's a it's a clip from, uh, from the competition to find the child star, you know, held recently. And uh, I, I, I don't have a clue because I don't follow any of those programs. But then he sent me the clip, a blind child wins the competition, you know. And then when he wins the competition, the announcer asked this child, what do you prefer? Would you prefer to have your sight or to win the competition? And you know what the child answers? I want to win the competition. You know, it's stunning. You know, the whole audience is shocked. I want to win the competition. More than seeing. You know, the announcer says, you don't know what you are saying. You know, to see is better. This competition is nothing compared to seeing. He says, no, I want to win the competition. Why? Because this child has never seen. Are you following what I'm saying? He has never seen in his lifetime. So for him, winning the competition is something tangible he can hold on to. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The concept of seeing is only an idea. I thought that's a brilliant way of explaining obedience to the commandments of God. Obedience to the commandments of God while giving you total freedom and liberation is only a concept. Sin, you have a taste of it. Human recognition, we have a taste of it. You know, to be respected and loved by others, we have a taste of it. So, what we have tasted is always better than the promises that God is giving us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why people who say, I will give my whole life to serve the Lord, somebody shows a little appreciation, down they go. 
you know, and suddenly all their lifetime's commitment means nothing. Why is that? Because they tasted a little bit of human love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? You have to ask yourself the question. I have to ask myself the question. What's the question I have to ask myself? Am I rejecting God and obedience to Him for some little satisfaction in this world? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? That's the first fact today. The second one is coming from Exodus 20, verse 7. Exodus 20, verse 7. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. So what's the command? Don't misuse the name of God. My brothers and sisters, it's an amazing truth, isn't it? Don't misuse the name of God, you know. Now of course we can say we don't misuse the name of God. Let me put it in a way that we understand. Don't use the name of God. <laughs> Very simple. The moment you turn it around, you'll understand what that means. Don't use the name of God. You know? So, you know, a boy is attracted to the girl, you know. So he wants her to somehow be reciprocate back and say, the Lord is telling me to tell you, you know. The Lord is telling me to tell you that you should get married to me. That is actually misusing the name of God. You know, because I'm telling somebody because I am invested in that. Are you following what I'm saying? Right. Or even to a meeting like this, it looks as if someone is totally committed. But in the secret place of their heart, they are coming to look at somebody, to see somebody. You know what will happen? You will never experience God in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God cannot break through into your heart because already you have a mixed motive. It looks as if you are committed. It looks as if you are coming for the Lord. But in actual fact, you are coming because a need or a urge of the flesh is to be satisfied. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It happens in other ways, you know. You know, uh, people, you know, people who come to places like this, many of them are vulnerable, you know. What do you mean by vulnerable? They themselves are going through crisis. So what do you do? You can become a predator, become, you know, you can prey on vulnerable people. How do you do that? You listen to them. You know. Oh, what a terrible thing happened to you. My God, your husband is really bad, you know. He shouldn't realize how lucky he is. Down they go. And what happens? You are preying on somebody else's crisis. And if you do that, you are breaking the fundamental commands of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know the greatest, biggest punishment for that? Number one, you will not experience God in your life. You'll be a slave to your lust. You'll be a slave to your desire. You'll be a slave to your need. But the worst thing is, you will become someone who blocks somebody else's journey. And for those people, Jesus said, it is better that you tie a stone round your neck and you are thrown into the water than to drag somebody else into a sin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know people who come here sometimes who are hunting after married people. 
It's an amazing thing, you know. And it happens. Why is that? Sin is entrenched. Of course, when the time comes, they say, praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. But secret of their heart, they are hunting after somebody in their life. The punishment is, never will they know the deeper life of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that's why I'm saying, even if someone looks pretty holy, first question they are, motives <laughs> you know because jesus said you must be as wise as the serpent as innocent as the dove <laughs> but as wise as the serpent so when people come and they are nicely kind to you you have to ask the question you know why are you so nice to me why are you so kind to me you know some people you know show their holiness quietly underneath after some time you can see they are out fishing for money from people you know, their motive was never to come here to experience god their motive was actually to find a way to collect some money but maybe they were driven by their need but they never enjoy the security of god praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord you know when you enjoy the security of god you're not attached to anything because you know and you know that god provides you never know that you'll never know it you'll always be manipulating hunting processing grabbing because you have lost god by controlling your own life sin can you see what the problem of sin is it looked as if sin was all out there isn't it but to see sin is hidden within our own hearts praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord this thing of not having no misusing the name of god is in the gospel i have no time to read the gospel but i'm going to explain it everyone knows it john 2 13 to 25 you know what happened in John 2, 13 to 25. Uh, what happened was, Jesus came into the temple. And there were money changers who were working in the temple. They were selling cattle. They were selling sheep. They were selling pigeons. They were exchanging money. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second commandment was the problem there. From all over the world, Jews were coming to the temple. So what happened? There were money changers who were changing the money of those Jews who were coming from various countries into a money that was accepted by the temple. Because the temple didn't accept uh, money with the figure of a Roman emperor on it. So they exchanged the money for temple money. And as they exchanged, they started getting more and more commissions. Then of course you have to offer sacrifice. What do you mean? If you have committed a grave sin, poor animal. Why do, why is, why do you call it a poor animal? Because they had to kill an animal, shed the blood and receive forgiveness. Therefore, therefore, animals had to be sacrificed. Rich people gave cattle. Half middle class people gave sheep. Poor people gave pigeons. Now this trading was going on. And Jesus saw. He said, don't make my father's house a market place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you go to John 2.16, you will have that. To those who sold doves, he said, you can repeat that. Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now you can see here the heart of Jesus. If you are writing now. Jesus wanted people to come directly to God. But people who were selfish 
with self-interest in their hearts, they were more interested in making sure that they could make a profit from those who came to God. You know that Jesus never ever reacted to sinners. I have yet to see something in the gospel, the four gospels. I'm, if someone can show me a place where Jesus reacted to sinners, I will stand corrected, you know. But as far as I know, he never reacted to sinners. Even to the woman caught in adultery, what did he say? Neither do I condemn you. But to these people he said, if you are using God and trying to make a profit or work for your own pleasure and you prevent people from coming to me if you are tempting them if you are trying to break their life and prevent their journey with me he said you will have the wrath of God upon your life praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord and we need to be careful you know even as I say it I am well aware of my own challenge, you know, because one day I have to stand before God. And when I stand before God, He's not going to ask me how many people were baptized in the Holy Spirit by you. He's not going to ask me that. He's going to ask me, did you love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength? Or did you have a motive in doing what you did? For that, I have to answer to God. And if I have no answer, those whom I preach to will be in heaven and we may not actually be able to go there. So my one prayer is, I can tell you honestly, I say, Lord, keep my heart sincere, but if you think that I'll fall, take me. Because we have lived a long life now. It's enough. You know, take us. He can take us in a moment, you know. He can take us into his heart. Take us rather than allow us to drift away from the beauty of this journey. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you are right with God, when your motives are pure, things become effortless. Doors open, things happen, breakthroughs take place, and God works in the most powerful, amazing ways. If you don't, like I said that in the morning, in, as I started, if you are not right with God, everything is laborious. Everything is a struggle. Everything is a problem because you carry the weight of your life upon your shoulders. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Move by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you understand what I'm saying? Can you see? And that's why he was so reactive to these people. And then they asked him, what kind of authority do you have to do this? Why is that? Because he was not a priest. Neither was he a Pharisee. Neither was he a scribe. Neither, you know, neither was he a Sadducee, you know. So he didn't have any kind of authority. In fact, he was from the one knee, you know, like we say one knee. He was from the one knee. He had come from Galilee, a carpenter. And now he has jumped into the middle and he's hammering people with a whip. He, they ask, what authority do you have to do this? And then he says, you destroy this temple and in three days it will be rebuilt. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They say, temple took 45 years to build. You're going to build it in three days. Jesus made an incisive revelation. What is that? He said, God who dwelt in the Holy of Holies in the temple of Jerusalem was now living in the heart of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a hand, my brothers and sisters? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He was living in the heart of Jesus Christ. Now he is the temple of God. It's an amazing truth. You know, that's why he said, you destroy this temple and it will rise again in three days. And that's exactly what happened. 
people could not see the temple of God in Jesus. Not because the temple wasn't there, because when you are a sinner and your motives are sinful, you are blind to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They were blind. They couldn't see it. And the beautiful thing is, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed. And when the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed, you know, uh, once we had the opportunity on one of our visits to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, you know, they, they worked it out that we were able to go under the temple, you know. Normally tourists are not allowed there, but they took permission from the Israeli government and we were taken under. And when we went under the, the temple, you know, uh, for the first time we saw the rocks, the stones that were toppled by the Romans 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus said, no stone will remain upon a stone. And it was toppled by the Romans. From that day up to today, no sacrifice has been offered on the temple of Jerusalem. Can you imagine? The sacrifice stopped. A sacrifice that had gone on for a thousand years stopped. Not only that, they cannot establish the sacrifice. Why is that? Because the Muslims say that Muhammad went up to heaven to receive the Quran from that place. And the Muslims will tell you, if they build a Jewish temple here, we'll all kill them and kill ourselves. So therefore, in the recent future, there is no way that the temple of Jerusalem will be built. No sacrifice. But on the other hand, already the temple has been built. Who is that? Jesus Christ. But the temple is not only Jesus Christ. Everyone who makes Jesus the Lord of their lives, Jesus Christ makes you and makes me a temple of the living God. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If I remember right, 1 Corinthians 3.16, if I remember right, you know, my memory has to be held until I see it. 1 Corinthians 3, it's right, right. Look at this text. Don't you know, you can repeat that, that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you see the miracle now? Can you see the miracle? The temple of God is Jesus. But not only Jesus, when you give him first place and make him the Lord of your life, you yourself become the temple in which God lives. But not only does he live in you, he will manifest himself to other people through you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Miracles will take place. The power of God will flow through our lives. And suddenly, something bigger than ourselves begins to happen. Because the Lord is living inside our hearts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So tonight, the question is, why don't we see ourselves as the temple of God? The answer is very simple, because we have given something else the first place. If you change that tonight and give Jesus the first place, if you change that tonight and submit to the will of Jesus in your life, I can tell you, you will see him, you will hear him, you will know him, not just outside, you will hear him within your own heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we worship the Lord, let's ask him to manifest himself to us tonight in the most powerful way. Praise the Lord. It's the mystery of our God. If you surrender to him, you see him. If you give him the first place, he makes you the temple 
in which he lives with his glory and his power and his blessings if you give any other thing even your own self first place the great darkness descends on us and we live alone we walk alone we struggle alone through life so therefore let us come before him in a special way oh god we don't want any other gods but you we don't want any other one thing to rule us but you become the lord of our life become the god over our lives thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah let's welcome jesus let's once again dispel the darkness around us with praise with worship with honor with glory hallelujah 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 praise you father bless your holy name hallelujah 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 glory to your name worship you father hallelujah 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 thank you father you are worship, worship you lord worship you jesus lord prepare me to be a sanctuary
sister look at the holy eucharist can you see the face of jesus if you cannot how do we discover him it's very simple look at your own heart and see is it the face of jesus that is ruling in your heart or is it some desire some addiction some kind of sin some deep need to do something that is ruling your life my brother my sister the moment you let go what you want to do somehow i want to do it i will never let go this addiction I will never let go this relationship. I will never let go this way of making money. I will never let go this pleasure. The moment you let it go, a miracle happens. You begin to see the face of Jesus. You see him in this holy Eucharist. Then you see him in your own heart. as he rules in your life you begin to hear his voice you begin to know his leading and the pathways in the desert and in the middle of the storm of your life opens up for you because the lord has come to lead you out of the land of slavery into the land of freedom maybe we don't see it anymore because slavery has become my freedom selfishness has become my joy my own desires has become my god and i'm unable to come out of that place and i'm stuck inside you don't have to come out my brother my sister you don't have to struggle with it all you have to do is admit it at the feet of jesus all you have to do is to surrender it at the feet of jesus lord another god has ruled my life another god has come into my heart and i want to give it to you god will take that god away and you will be made the sanctuary of god himself shall we say praise and thank the lord hallelujah 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 thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah glory to your name praise your father bless you lord hallelujah hallelujah worship you father bless you lord glory to your name hallelujah 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 thank you lord so move in our lives lord move in our hearts lord move upon us lord move upon our lives lord reveal the darkness lord the hidden struggles inside us the sinfulness hidden inside 
the power of our sinfulness lord i don't want to walk a slave i don't want to be a prisoner i don't want to walk in darkness lord i don't want to walk in my sinfulness lord i need you i need you in my life more than my desire more than my joy lord i need you more than my addictions more than my hidden attractions more than my life itself a word into our hearts break the deep enslavements the hidden attachments lord as you come into our lives release your power extend your right hand to the the sun connect with jesus forget everybody else Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I come before you I come before you I freely admit I freely admit God's other than you have ruled my life have ruled my life Lord Jesus Lord Jesus they have made me slave they have made me in slave they have brought death they have brought death and darkness into my life and darkness into my Lord life. Jesus Lord Jesus I don't want to live in that darkness I don't want to live in I don't want darkness. to live in that struggle I want to live in that struggle I want you I want you to be the lord of my life to be the lord of my and life and I want to be and I want to be the sanctuary the sanctuary for you to live in for you to live in. so Lord Jesus so Lord Jesus even though my nature rebels even though my nature rebels even though my feelings rebel even though my feelings rebel I choose to believe I choose to believe you are a better answer you are a better a deeper answer a deeper answer a greater answer, a greater answer than my own understanding than my own, understanding, than my own desires than my own, desires, than my own ways than my own way. so lord jesus, lord jesus whatever contradicts your commandments whatever contradicts your commandments, however good it seems to me however good it i lay it at your feet tonight I lay it at your feet. Lord, jesus, lord jesus i give it to you, it to you. no other gods will rule me no other gods not lust me. not lust not desire not, desire. not, anger, not anger not revenge not, revenge. not self pity not, not, not sadness not struggle lord jesus, lord jesus. Only, you only you will rule my heart lord, lord jesus no lust will rule my heart no, lust will rule no, my heart. Desire, no desire to do my own desire, my own will, desire. Will, rule my will rule my heart i trust heart. you trust to bring you. me happiness to bring me to meet my needs, to, meet my needs. Uh, to bring blessing into my life and i give life. it all to you lord thank you, thank you lord. father thank you, hallelujah hallelujah worship you father bless you lord glory to your name is by sabai 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 thank you lord hallelujah 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 thank you father bless you lord hallelujah 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 worship your father hallelujah thank you lord let's say it again lord prepare me to be a sanctuary lord prepare me give us that grace lord to be a sanctuary
Let's say it again. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You're at says my children you fear to surrender your plans and your desires to me thinking that you will lose your joy and your happiness and your peace but I am giving you a promise tonight if you say yes to me the light I will shine within your heart in the middle of what you thought was a prison and a darkness will turn to light and my joy will make your life complete says the lord thank you father hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. thank you Jesus. praise you father you, hallelujah 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 the lord is showing someone who is wanting to serve so many other people but when this person falls this person falls into the flesh reacts in the flesh acts in the flesh this person doesn't even know that the blindness but today the Lord has shown that to this person and the Lord is telling you my son my daughter I showed it to you not to condemn you because I have loved you always I have showed it to you so that you can give it back to me so that I can minister to that darkness to that place and I can turn it into a blessing says the Lord Hallelujah. thank you father Hallelujah. praise Hallelujah. your father glory Glory to your name, hallelujah. Lord is showing me a person who wants to sell this person's house and settle some debts, also rebuild another building, and it is not moving. Lord says, wait for another 12 days, the right person will come and buy that house for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Lord is showing me a person who has a problem with the ankle, you feel you have a pain when you walk. Lord says, now you walk and see, I have healed you. Says Thank you, Father. Praise Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is revealing a person with a earache. The Lord says, I'm touching you and healing you, my Thank child. Thank you, Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord. Father. The Lord is Lord. also speaking to a person who is waiting in great expectation of a job. This person has not had a job for a while. The Lord says, do not worry, my child. In the coming weeks, you will hear and you will get the job that I have planned for you, Thank says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 There's a person who's scared of the dark and you have been living your whole life like this. The Lord says, today I'm delivering your word. This Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 There's a person who has an ear problem and sometimes you cannot hear from the right ear. The Lord says, today I'm healing you. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. The Lord is speaking to a non-Christian who is praying to have a child. I will bless you, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. The Lord is showing a person who has a problem in the throat, and the doctors have asked this person to do certain tests, and this person is fearing that th whether this will become a, something serious. But the Lord says, my dear child, you have been praying for me, and I have answered your prayers, and everything will become negative, and all the tests will become normal, you, says Lord. the Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory the, to your name. The Lord is showing a person uh, who has a problem regarding uh, property. Actually, this person is holding this property that does not belong to this person. The Lord says, 
uh, my child, let go of that and you simply see all the blessings will fall upon you and your family when you let go what does not belong Thank to you, you sister. Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace, Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to a person who's in the furniture industry and this person is in a crisis. The Lord says, fix your gaze at me. I want to make you a blessing. Thank, Thank you, you, Father. Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Glory the Lord is speaking to a person. Some boils have come on your face and you are very worried about this. Uh, today the Lord is speaking, my child, I know your fear. I know your condition. Today I'm healing you completely. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Let us get ready for the blessing, my brothers and sisters. given them bread from heaven having in itself all delight let us pray O God who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion grant us we pray so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign forever and ever
Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Oh, sacrament, oh, stand my brothers and sisters and we give a mighty hand to the Lord tonight for his love for his mercy for his goodness thank you father praise you Lord hallelujah 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 glory to your name worship you father praise you Lord hallelujah hallelujah join us in the final hymn remind reminding you tomorrow morning uh, our morning prayer is there at 6 30 in the morning join us which tomorrow, tomorrow is a holiday offer that time to the lord and today we didn't have the healing prayer because uh, it is lent and uh, we are having the lenten message instead praise the lord 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 join us Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. Since I got 
promise good to me. His word, my hope, secures. To you will my sin and portion be as long as life. Praise the Lord, dear brothers and sisters, we would like to welcome you to come and claim the words of knowledge. If you feel that the Lord has given you an experience, if you feel that the Lord has healed you, uh, please feel free to come in front. And we have members here who will testify it on your behalf and glorify the Lord together with us. Thank you. Praise, praise the Lord. I myself would like to claim a word that was given about a pain in the ankle. And I've been having this for the last couple of days. And today I'm going to claim this word that the Lord has given that he's healed me of this pain in the ankle. Also, we had another server who came and claimed the word about a person who's not having a job and that the Lord is, will deliver and give him a job. Today, the Lord has promised him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This brother is just claiming the word for his daughter who's gone for a, a, a test, a biopsy test uh, overseas uh, for a throat issue, for a throat problem. And today the word is given exactly for that situation. So with so much conviction, so much faith in God, he's accepting this word as a promise from the Lord that there's nothing to fear and the Lord has delivered on his promise. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you for being the healer, Lord. Lord. We want to claim in faith, Lord, that though she's not physically here, you have spoken the word into her life. We praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. This is just claiming the word. Um, her brother has been trying for the longest time to sell a property, some land. And today, the word is given for a person who's been struggling to sell this person's land and property. And the Lord is assuring that he will um, get into this situation and find a solution. Lord, we want to thank you, Father. Thank you for, the, for your presence. Thank you for hearing our prayer for all that we are looking for in our lives. We praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We have another brother who is also claiming the word about uh, about the Lord's promise, who is not having employment at the moment, and he's looking for a job. And today, the Lord gives him a word. I will find uh, employment. I will assure you that today, seek me first, and everything else will be given to you. Lord, we thank you for this promise. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. you father hallelujah praise you lord thank you jesus this brother is claiming the word about he has a, a store that sells furniture and he's claiming that word uh, he says the lord has given him double fold but today the lord is speaking to him and saying focus your gaze at me don't make this the god of your life so today he's carrying this message and he's thanking God for all the blessings that he has received. But he knows through the message, through the word that was given, that he needs to make God the first place in his life. Lord, we thank you, Father. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. We have another son here who's claiming the word. He's had a throat infection and some issues with the throat. He's been to see the doctors, waiting for the results. Are you waiting for the Yeah. He's, he's done the test, and today the Lord is assuring him that he is going to be healed, and there's no more of these health uh, fears that he's having about his throat. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you've already gone ahead. You've already healed him, Lord. We praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. We glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. This brother is also claiming the word about a property that he's been trying so hard to try and sell. And today he's, he's really being comforted that within 12 days that the Lord is going to find a buyer for him. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the comfort. Thank you for the promise you're giving this son. And we praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Another brother who's also claiming the word about looking for employment, and the Lord assures him, I will find employment for you. So he's comforted by these words because he's been looking for employment for a while. Lord, we thank you, Father. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise and thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise. Praise you. Yes, yes, I 